Hi there, my name is Andy Young and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now I've just finished doing some work on a, an old, well, 2006-2007 Chinese built GN250. There were problems with the charging system and we got a new Reg Rectifier unit from Japan, from Kiwi X, part number, uh, VR, whatever it is there, look, okay. And we did some test data on that, some testing on the new unit. Um, the, the test stuff from Suzuki and it was a bit ambiguous the test data didn't really match what we got from the new unit but we fitted to the bike and we did some voltage checks with the engine running at 5000 rpm and at idle and so on and everything checked out fine it was a pass compared you know when we looked at the 13.5 the to 15 volt charging rate threshold um, but just for kicks we've got the old voltage, um, well the regulator rectifier unit, this is what um, converts, it does two jobs, it converts the AC current from the stator, the three stator windings, to a usable DC voltage to charge at the battery, and um, it also prevents the battery from overcharging, and the way that it does that is very different to on a car. On a car, the, um, the, the voltage regulator controls the, the field strength of the rotor inside the alternator. On the, the motorcycle, the, the field, the rotating field, which intersects uh, or bisects um, the, the stator windings and it induces the current of the stator, is done using fixed magnets. So essentially, the faster the engine, uh, the, the crankshaft rotates, the faster these um, magnetic flux lines pass through the stator windings and they induce more and more and more uh, current, voltage, quote like, you know into that, into those three windings. And if the battery is already fully charged, then we have a surplus of electrical energy. And what this does is it turns it to heat. And that's why it has these cooling fins on here. And these things can get very, very hot. And they need to be put somewhere on the bike by the manufacturers that has good airflow. And if they're tucked out of the way behind panels, they can often overheat. Now, this unit showed signs of actually overheating and we've got a crack on the back in the resin there look you can just about make that out there yeah, look there's a crack in the resin and it shows signs of water ingress if you look very closely there is the resin here has risen above the casting line the top of the casting whereas everywhere else it's recessed by about a mil so it tells me really that either something inside has gone pop and it's pushed that resin up, or there's actually water's got in and it's caused corrosion, and the corrosion has caused the resin to lift. And I don't know which it is. So I thought it'd be quite cool because this is now scrap to cut it open and to see if we can see anything, see if we get any more sort of tips as to as to what the primary fail for this unit was. Did it overheat? Um, or, you know, was it down to water ingress? And you know, the bottom line is we may not be able to tell because the overheating may have caused the resin to crack away from the casting and then the water's got in and caused the corrosion. Or, you know, the water's got in and caused the corrosion and that corrosion has then caused the component to fail and overheat. I don't know which it is, but, you know, let's have a look inside. Uh, I'll get the old angle grinder out and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can see. <laughs> Wow, that didn't take too long. Now, um, basically, as I was cutting it, a big chunk of that resin, which is probably shiny out, a big chunk of that resin that was, uh, you know, was on there. You can see that crack, and it leads directly down to the circuit board. Yeah. Now, it also looks like this is where the the moisture was and you can see it's lifted up there and there's a little hole there look as well I think oh there we are look let's just even pry that open get rid of some of that resin never been inside one of these before so it's quite interesting to see see what's going on obviously not repairable not really but uh, yeah, there's the circuit board, or, or maybe the backing actually. That's the animal. Oh, there we are. Look, 
so it's like a two layer circuit board there's one here this bit and there's lots of signs of corrosion you know all this is all furry and corroded and you know as you well know electronics don't like that kind of stuff nothing to lose here have we just looking for signs of problems oh, man. destruction derby these things get amazingly hot when they're you know trying to disperse all the extra heat energy That's the, the grommets that I'm pulling away now. So I'm just looking for signs of corrosion and burning. And this area here, this is the top end, this is where it was leaking. Uh, or the, the, uh, the resin had lifted away from the aluminium. There's quite a lot of components in there really, isn't there? It's pretty, pretty amazing. Obviously there's going to be a bridge rectifier in there, because we want to convert AC to DC. Let's see if we can get that out of there. Get that big chunk of resin out. It's probably going to forfeit some components. Oh, there we are, look. I'm sure there's people out there that will know exactly what's inside here, but I have no idea, not really. See, that looks corroded there as well. And these things don't last forever. Better eyesight, I could read it. Okay. Tell you what, it's not going to work anymore, is it? Resin does a pretty good job, but not good enough. Uh, there's another one of those little bricks. I think that's another one there. By the looks of it. <clears throat> so we've got the three yellow wires coming in. There's one. There's another one. There's your red wire. And there's your ground. Did it fail because water got in it? Or did it fail because it, you know, it just, something inside popped? I just don't know. I really don't know. Bottom line is, it's definitely knackered now. Okay, so that's as far as we can go with that one. Okay, that brings us to the end of this very short autopsy video on a motorcycle um, reg rectifier unit. Didn't see an awful lot, did we? It looks very different inside to what we'd find on a, a car alternator. But if any of you uh, can add to the information here, then it would be great to stick it in the comments because, you know, let's face it, we're always learning, all of us. Um, from a mechanics perspective, would we need to do that? Absolutely not, no, not at all. All we need to do is, is basically identify the failure on the vehicle uh, and change the component. Um, and there were telltale signs on the outside of that reg rectifier unit. You know, it had the cracked uh, resin, it had the corrosion around the casting um, as well. So, you know, there were, there were, there were signs that tell us all is not well inside that unit and it needs to be changed. But we also, on the previous videos, uh, did some testing on the charging system on the bike and we identified through the results of that testing that again the Reg Rectifier unit was the failure. Okay crew, you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. You'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter. So feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, I would ask, uh, first point of contact, through YouTube comments, please. Um, you'll also, uh, you can also subscribe to the channel. Please do if you found the video interesting. 
there's many other videos going up on the channel. Click on the subscribe button, you'll see a gear icon come up. Click on the gear icon and then you can tick the box to turn on notifications. And our friends down at YouTube will send you an email um, as and when I upload any new videos, hopefully. All right, chaps, keep safe. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.